Welcome to the MRX Influencers Podcast, where you come for the insights, but stay for the good times. I'm Dan Fleetwood, and on this podcast, I chat with the best and brightest minds in the research space. On this episode, I chat with Mark Michelson, who is a founder at CX Forms, a market research practitioner for the past 30 years, and someone who's really respected in the research space. We talk about changes in the research industry, where the industry is headed, and many other things. So I hope you'll enjoy the conversation today. Crystal Weiss, who's the Director of Marketing here at Question Pro, also joins me for this conversation. So without further ado, let's get into it. Hey, Mark. Hello, hello. And now, I'm, hey. I think I'm butchering your last name, so please help me out here. Uh, it, you know. It's Michelson, but I get all of them. My favorite okay. ones, my favorite mangling is Mike Markelson. Oh, Mark, I, saw, I saw you message me Markleson. I'm like, I don't think that's right. They really just want you to be Megan Markle. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah. you know. All right. All right. Well, anyway, welcome to the show, Mark. It's a pleasure having you on. Nice to be here. So for those who don't, don't know Mark, I'd be surprised, first of all. But um, Mark, is a he's a marketing research specialist, 35 plus years of experience across CX, research, you name it. And Mark, I got to ask you something before we get started. So you've been to 70 countries, is that? Yes, 70 countries. Um, wow. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's, a, that's amazing. What What were some of your favorites that you might know, be like? I really enjoy all of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, some are better than others. I mean, I love Brazil. I love Indonesia, uh, mm. Thailand. Um, yeah, it just depends on what kind of mood you're in. Australia is a ball. I mean, uh-huh. God, you know, wow. people down there, everyone's, it, to me, it's about the culture and the and the people. And right. then, then I'd say probably the food and then the art. So, I'm like, so people, food, and art. Nice. That's yeah. good. I like it. I like it. Well, thanks again for joining today. I know we teased that we're going to be talking about some of the biggest changes over the past 30 years. And we'll kind of get into the last 30 years, last five years. And I think let's kick it off. So what are like the top three? What do you think are the biggest changes over the past 30 years? Gosh, when I started back in 84, you know, we had telephone, we had intercept. Mystery shopping was still kind of out there as far as that. And then focus groups, you know, IDIs. Mm-hmm. That was pretty much it, you know, or or just looking at large things of data. So internet by far was was the, the biggest influence in my lifetime and career. Right. And, and, and in so many ways, I just I remember the days when we were having big conferences uh, arguing about the the validity of of online versus telephone, um, you know, and, and there were all these tests, and we would have all these calibration tests. So everybody and their brother went out and did all these tests to prove that telephone was better than internet, or internet was better mm-hmm. than telephone. Turned out they were almost uh, exactly the same as far as correlation. So, and as more and more people started using the web, of course, it made it easier, and and then even more elegant. Um, a, over time, as we had the smartphone, everything was about making it mobile first and shorter. Mm-hmm. So, in the past, we used to have really long surveys and really long reports. I mean, I remember selling reports by the kilo. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's not that, that explains it's the not country you've been to. Then. <laughs> Nowadays, uh, everything is much more streamlined and really to the point. So. From the internet, just being able to do data collection uh, efficiently, uh, we also were able to do more complex things like mm-hmm. uh, conjoint, for instance. You know, yeah. conjoint was always done with cards, and you had to be in person and all this kind mm-hmm. of stuff. No, no telephone survey could do that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, being able to do more complex analytics, uh, and and I think that um, you know, mobile is is also really cool for qual. Uh, qual mm-hmm. has really shifted about, you know, I'd say 15 years ago, 2000, you know, maybe, gosh, 20 years ago, um, as we started to become more and more familiar with things like uploading photos. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then when, we, when, when, the, when the smartphone came around, it really blew up for Qual because we could do videos and sharing. Um, and so mobile ethnography became a thing. Uh, in the past, we were always, you know, how do you self-diary stuff versus observe people in the wild? Right, right. And now, you know, we, we've we've been through a lot of that, and it's become more acceptable now to be able to do mobile ethnography as well as a bulletin board type discussions. Yeah. So that's that's a big shift. Now, I think the biggest one that's that's catching everyone off their feet now. It's really kind of two prong, but speed of delivery yeah. uh, yeah. is just huge. Um, you know, it used to, yeah, right, Crystal? <laughs> <You got a question? laughs> I have a question. You, you agree. Yeah, go ahead. What's your, what's, what's your question? 
Well, first of all, I don't know what ethnography means. And second of all, (laughs) what speed of delivery to the customer, like your client or to, uh, to the consumer speed of delivery to the client Uh, for, for, Mm. for, uh, for marketing research intelligence. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, ethnography is, is, is best stated, like living in the shoes of your customer, living in the shoes of another. It's an anthropological method. Mm -hmm. It has to do in the past. I mean, we used to go in with, uh, me and a, and a videographer would go and basically stay with a family for a couple of days, you know, or go to work with someone uh, for a couple of days, like a UPS driver. Just <laughs> unfortunately, I've ridden so many tractors, I can't begin to tell you. No, it is true. It's uh, the best way. You, maybe you could describe it as it's like it's like the TV show You, but in a research sense, where you're following people and they, you don't really want them to know. You know? It's so dark. <laughs> yeah, and in the past, I mean, we we you know from cooking, watch them cook spaghetti or change, you know, or baby yeah. rooms and how do you deal with children or all these different topics. We had to go and basically observe them. And this was back, hmm. you know, for years, this was the thing. Um, Instead of now, doing self-reporting. Yeah, it's self-reporting. And there, there's some funny things about that. You know, like objects under observation behave differently, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that's a physics thing, you know, Heisenberg yeah. principle and all that. So those things come into play, but I think people are, as as much as they like to self-edit, we're still getting a good story from them, especially mm-hmm. in, in larger quantities. Uh, at reach across the country, speed to delivery for data, for instance. Mm-hmm. Gosh, Mystery mm-hmm. Shop reports used to be hand-printed, mailed, or faxed. And then we had to do quality control to enter them. Uh, surveys would come in from the field, and we'd have to do data entry, right? Um, those kinds of things took a while. So you can expect you know, a month or two before you get a report. Now, how many minutes? <laughs> right, that's true. That's true. <laughs> um, I could deploy a survey right now, as you know, and get the results back. And 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 I remember that was a fascinating thing when we could actually have you know video captures from the field within a minute or two. Yeah. And we'd do that during conferences. Everyone's like, "Wow!" Nowadays, put your quarter and get your report out. <laughs> right. No, it's true. I mean, that's kind of table stakes now, right? You need to have that yeah, something like that. that. But and that's huge. And, and then being able to act on it closed loop. And that, that's where CX really comes into play now. So right. in my world, there's all this front end research that designs stuff, right? And I'm involved mm-hmm. in a lot of journey mapping things or product design or building design studies on the front end. Largely qualitative, but some quant to make sure you're making a good decision. On the back end, which is where CX research kind of lives mostly now, is the measurement stuff. Right. And with that came fun, some fun complexities. So, for instance, um, transactional data capture. You know, how, how satisfied are you transaction, each transaction? Mm-hmm. Um, and also uh, different types of metrics. The MPS came along, um, as well as CSATs have kind of always been there, but then you have CES, customer effort scores, and others. These are now being monitored. In the past, we had mystery shopping and SAT scores, and they would go into an index. Now you have these data points coming in along with operational data, sales mm-hmm. data. So you have several different points of view of transactional uh, perceptions, right? As well as operational data. Was it delivered on time or not? You can tell. Right. And, you know, what other things were going on? So, you know, how long did someone sit on a website, for instance? That's just observational versus yeah. how did you feel about navigation? <laughs> Right. So those types of data are now coming together in one place at the speed of, you know, of instant. And more importantly, there's closed loop stuff around those data measures. So as the measures come in, then you can assign how do we fix this and get it mm-hmm. done quickly instead of taking a couple months to examine it. <laughs> right. right. An idea, go out and test it again. No, that makes sense. So then you know, you talked about sort of like the speed to insights or people want things quicker now. They, you don't need to do the big, you know, published report and send it out or maybe you do in a different sense. But, you know, people, probably your clients and people you've worked with, they still want that data. How how are you able to get it done? Quicker? You know, it, it's fun. I, I actually, when I consult with my clients, I'm like, look, we can all look at these data together as they come in on your mm-hmm. dashboards, on your, on your platform, on question. Right. You can sit there and watch them come in. All right, we all have the same information. It's what we do to interpret the information that gives us insight. Okay, mm-hmm. and that's the hard part that I haven't really seen AI be able to do yet. I mean, they can 
help make things easier as far as analytics, especially you know big open ended kind of things, right? But it's not necessarily going to tell you what to do about it, and that's where the marketing consulting comes in. You say, okay, well these are these are the data points. This is what we've learned, right? Now, mm-hmm. what do we do? What are the top three things I need to do today to improve my situation? It's better serve customers, better income, whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. So we're always trying to move that needle, you know, up. And so data is going to inform those decisions as we go up. Uh, there's a huge self-serve culture out there now, as you know, within survey research, oh, yeah. yep. mystery shopping, you know, whatever. I can, I can put a quarter in, get a photo of a Walmart display in Topeka right now. Mm-hmm. I'm sure I can have it in 10 minutes. <laughs> Mark, oh, yeah, that's I mean, my hometown. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure I can do this, you know. And <laughs> but so, then again, so what do I do about it? What do I do when I have the information? If I can't act on something, why even bother gathering? Right. That's a good point, I think. Why have the data if you can't act on it? Mm-hmm. Well, and so many people just want to gather data to have to say they have it. Well, that they, if right? that's their only job, that's fine. They're just doing their job and checking it off and <laughs> kicking the can down the field. The key is, is how do you actually change a business, improve a business, better serve mm-hmm. customers? And so you have to have that in mind when you design a study. You know, yeah. why ask yeah. stuff you can't do anything about? You know, I hate the, all the demographic questions. We know these people. We can go in there and figure it out. You know, <laughs> you know we don't need to know shoe size unless we're showing the shoes. <laughs> right. That's true. That's true. Mark, do you think do you think having all this data is a detriment, or do you think do you see it as? No, it's just taking us a while to filter out what's what's needed and valuable and what's not. I mean, sometimes you really have to sift a lot. I mean, but you know, it's, it's like the old story when. The, when the whole room's full of uh, horse poop, you know, keep looking for the horse. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you got to sort through it. You know, it's there. You just got to sort through it in order to find it. So, um, talking with a lot of friends who are, you know, deep, big data analytic people, mm-hmm. the highest speed powers we have now allow for such cool stuff that we couldn't do before. Uh, regression, you know, uh, being able to do um, uh, uh, different types of, of, segmentation. Uh, um, you can do that now, late in class, for instance. You would not have been able to do that on the firepower we had 20 years ago. Right, right. As far as, as, far as processing power. I and mean, you'd still be waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's so true. What do you see? What are the directions of some of these tools and of research overall that you see? What direction are we going in the next five years in your view? Well, it seems like everyone and their brothers buying each other out. So. I know. I'm not sure what's happening. You know? This week was a quiet week compared to last week. So. Yeah, well, there you go. You know, and with that comes all kinds of interesting things. You know, for instance, I've been looking at a lot of um, journey mapping, cloud-based journey mapping, data-driven platforms. That's a right. mouthful. So I'm looking at that kind of stuff saying, how can I find one of these that's going to be around a while and, and that will also accept good inputs? So it's, it's a living map instead of just a static picture. And, mm-hmm. and I'm looking at that saying, okay, more of those kinds of tools being adopted into um, voice of customer platforms that bring it to life for regular people. Also being able to close loop around this stuff. You know, if you just focus on customer experience realm, of mm-hmm. monitoring and measuring stuff, right? You monitor it. The old saying, what gets measured gets done. I think Tom Peters said that. Mm-hmm. So if you're looking at trying to move the needle, then you need to have, you need to understand where the needle is at all times. It's kind of like an insurance policy. You know, is there a fire? Great. <laughs> like I'm alerting. <laughs> but, you know, right. just gathering together is, is one thing. But the other key is identifying your priorities what's really going to make a change. I hear a rattle, but what is it causing the rattle, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then being able to go in there and say, ah, I need to replace this thing or upgrade it or something. And we all, as customers, have to go through all the time from call center waiting to whatever, you know, product delivery, et cetera. Right. So it's just a matter of, of, of taking a long view on it and saying, how do we get to the horse in the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How do we find the horse quicker? So we're not yeah, how do we find the way through, all, yeah, way through all that manure, right? <laughs> exactly. And right. there's, you know, there's, there's lots of ways to, you know, to gather and uh, analyze data. And I think that the more and more AI tools are coming into play, it's mm-hmm. going to make life easier. Um, it, it is, it's not easy using all these tools either. I, I would like to see, you know, it's like 
like when we had AC and DC electricity, mm-hmm. you know, I, which one's going to work long term? <laughs> There's so many right. different. Right. Oh, do it. We, we speak this language. No, it's called that. And you're like, this is the same thing. Yeah, but different. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. It's true. I was like, I don't think I know what AC and DC electricity is. Yeah, well, there's, you know, battery. You know, well, there, you know, like, that's a whole other discussion. But <laughs> uh, at, the time, at the time, you had Tesla versus uh, um, uh, Edison, okay? And they, oh, yeah, they, I know who they generated are. energy <laughs> and how long it would keep. And it's just, but again, it's, it's a matter of terminology and approach, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. what is, you know, the best way to do stuff? You know, for a while, as we got into mobile, it was all about the micro survey, the micro survey, you know, do several surveys over time and data yep. searching. Yeah. Uh, I think we're somewhat back to, okay, let's have intentful purpose you know, around our surveys, you know, go in and yeah, if you can get that two or three things you need an answer to, great. But do you need to surround it with another 10 questions around who you are? demographics and things right you don't need that necessarily Most of the time we already know that. It depends on how you sample right yeah you mm-hmm. already have that <laughs> right so i think we've i think generally there's like this sweet spot of you know 10 to 12 minute surveys are okay but mm-hmm. still pe- see people like kind of pushing the envelope further and further like trying to jam everything in i think one of the best lessons is like ask yourself like if you're a respondent would you take this survey and if yeah. the answer is no then don't feel it. Like, <laughs> yeah, maybe a little more engaging and, you know, somewhat yeah. more fun if you can. I mean, you know, gosh, the, the world's incentivized to death, you know. And you don't want people just doing it because they, they're going to get the you know, prize at the end. You want them to do it because they actually have something to say. And if right. you can help them say that as easy as possible. Now, just like in qualitative, we, people can't always even say what they're thinking. So we use projective techniques, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, choose this picture. You know, what do you see in the mm-hmm. picture? Right. It's not anything about, and yet we're going deeper. Right. I think some of that may come out even more so in surveys at some point. I've seen a lot about, you know, like when Tinder came out, you could swipe right, swipe left, you know, <laughs> just yeah. a real quick kind of subliminal choicing, you know, choice modeling. <laughs> now everybody right. does it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, now why everyone, would you, why would you have an app that doesn't swipe? That's so exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. Um, yeah. Do you think, though, that some of those, especially with the qualitative, some of that when you, have companies that DIY and may or not have like market research professionals. Do you think that some of those deep insights are missed? Because it's like, I just want to be able to get the yes or no. And if they're not market research professionals, they don't know how to kind of like sift through the like. Yeah, it could be. I mean, you know, you look at Apple, they never did any research. (laughs) They came up with some (laughs) great products. You know, if we'd asked, uh, yeah, the old, the old adage coming back again, if you'd asked, uh, you know, uh, would you would you get into a metal tube being hurled through the air with peanuts thrown at you, crammed into a small chair? Right. Um, no, <laughs> you know, it sound fun, right? <laughs> you know and, and at the time, you can even visualize that kind of thing. Uh, at the time, we changed from horses to cars. You know, why would I need a car? I've got a perfectly good horse. Mm-hmm. Right. Know, sometimes right. it's going beyond the data a little bit, and that's where. I think it's more important to have a marketing b- mindset and a background to meet, understand and meet the need of customers mm-hmm. rather than be, uh, uh, analytics are important. You have to have good data. You have to have solid foundation. But a lot of what we do is, is basically just trying to predict what people are going to think and do, right? Mm-hmm. And, and if you're trying to get to that, yeah, you have to have your sampling and things. But if you're just trying to get a toe in the water and get some direction, I... I don't know if you have to be a professional to do that. You just have to have curiosity and open mind. And and really, what is the best way? You know, sometimes it's just observation. Um, sometimes it is inquiry and, and conversation. Uh, other times it's it's reflection from others, you know. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, what is, all this is trying to help people in business make better decisions, mm-hmm. period. Yep. And if if they on their own can wander around more, if they had time to, you know, they may be inspired by something they see that's not in any research report. That's where I'm going. It's 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 sometimes the the something that's not asked that we're missing, and that's why. I if you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. Well, sort of. I mean, <laughs> actually, I, I, the more I, every day I get super and stupider because the more I know, the less I know. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> I love that. That's a good quote. I like that. <laughs> no, I think that. I mean, oh that, that makes a lot of sense. I think it depends on sort of what 
be looking to find out the different methods and so forth. Um, I think you know, a few more questions for you, Mark, and then we'll let you go. But what, in terms of the convergence of CX and market research, are you seeing this as well? Do you think oh, it's yeah. really been there and we're just huge? No, it's more just huge. Okay. You know, we never called it CX in the in the old days. We were designing stores and products and right. doing mystery shopping and things. It, it, it was a term that came around a little bit later, but um, now it seems you know it's it's the latest uh, gold in them our heels kind of thing. So you know, with CX, I, I find that there's a, a battle right now, really, more in the marketing for CX realm. Mm-hmm. The CMOs are trying to be the CX leaders. Mm-hmm. Um, operations needs to embrace CX too. Um, and marketing research departments are being just almost just obliterated because they're now being tasked to specific areas and it's just sort of a consumer listening or voice of customer kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And and as more and more people are just putting their bonuses or whatever around one metric like an MPS, mm. um, their whole goal becomes how do I get my MPS score up? Go to any car dealer and get your car fixed and what are they going to tell you? Make sure to give me a 10 on that. Right. Yeah, thing, that's you know? true. Yeah. Uh, we used to do it with apartment communities, and we had we were panning out uh, ha- paper surveys at the time. And w- one community came back; all thirty-five questionnaires were in the same exact handwriting with different color ink. So you know, it becomes <laughs> becomes the wrong goal <laughs> for the business unit to try right. to get a better score without necessarily thinking why what's driving the score. Mm-hmm. So you think you. you- I mean, in your view, then you take the cus- the customer satisfaction. That's like a data point, right? And then you should do additional research based on that to see either why. why Just like well the NPS, why, I mean, why, why did you give this score? You know, that's more important. Mm-hmm. Right? You know, why did you give this score? Um, it, it, as far as the CX world, though, in general, we never saw valuations of companies in the billions True. until CX came along. Mm-hmm. And now it seems like every week or two, there's another company being sold for billions of dollars that's a, a survey platform or something, you know, and, mm-hmm. or whatever it might be that's a technology play within the CX space. The market research industry as a total, maybe $67, $70 billion annually worldwide. Mm-hmm. Heck, there's companies out there worth that much now. No, it's true. It's true, yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. When you throw around billion like it's nothing, you know, like you know, <laughs> you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're. I mean, it's just like valuations on these things. Yeah, you know, there yeah. has to be a whole different headset that says that's important stuff versus, oh, that's just information nice to know. Right, right. And then when it is tacked into your your systems for responding to people, you know, it's important to, to have that, you know, like mm-hmm. what gets measured gets done. So adding in the the X and the O data, as it's known, you know, together gives you a better handle on what's happening now and how do I make sure I don't have something bad happen. Right, mm-hmm. right. It doesn't necessarily help you design better stuff. It just points out where the aches and pains are. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good point, actually. I like that. I think, um, Mark, real quick, what are some practical steps you think researchers can take to kind of help stay ahead of the curve? Obviously, they can, you know, take courses and stuff, but what what's worked well in your estimation? Keep an open mind. Yeah. You know, I, I think as we as we as practitioners have our own specialties, uh, just you know, it's just like the, when you're selling hammers, the whole world's a nail. Mm-hmm. Just remember, there's more tools in the kit, and and be familiarize yourself with those tools because the hammer is not going to do what a drill does or a screwdriver. Right. <laughs> and true. you need to make sure you you have a good grasp of all the different tools and when it's mm-hmm. appropriate to use them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Perfect. I think that makes sense. That's probably a good spot to wrap it up, Mark. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, thanks so much, Mark. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining yeah, us today. Pleasure. Awesome. We'll have to do. We'll do a round <laughs> two next year. I think. You know. Yeah. <laughs> always, always enjoyable <laughs> chat with you guys. In, uh, yeah. uh, Did you look out the window the next year, Dan? Yeah. Coming soon. All right. All right. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. Sure. Take care. All right. Thanks. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to the MRX Influencers Podcast. If you want more information about Question Pro, go to questionpro.com. If you want to follow me, feel free to do so on LinkedIn or Twitter. Until next time, we'll see you later.